Um, usually when we come down here, a few people are very interested in the history of not just in our music and dances, but in folk costumes and that. But I thought I'd talk a little bit about part of the folk costume we never talk about, and that's hats. Because uh, most of these folk costumes have beautiful hats and head coverings that go with them. Okay, so not very many of them are wearing hats. A few reasons for that. Um, well, the obvious reason is, and I'll show you my hat, I'm actually going to get it right. Here's my hat, so you know why I'm not wearing it today. It just looks like a toque, but it's very special. There's just actual special traditional design to it, and it was hand-knitted by a dear friend of mine. And you will see, not all the folk costumes have these. Each folk costume you see is different because they represent our town or village or parish that we're from. And each region and each area has their own designs. There are some uh, provinces in Sweden that use this toque with the men's outfit you see a lot of red toques in many, many of the provinces in Denmark. If you see, if you go to see Danish dancers, we have one Danish dancer with today, but she's wearing a woman's outfit. Um, they're very popular in Denmark, these toques. Now, hats in the cost, in, as part of the traditional folk costumes, did serve sort of purposes. This one, I'm gonna put it on, but... So the folk costumes are all different, and there was a period of time where you could be shopping in a market in Stockholm, and you could see a few people from out of town, and you knew exactly what village, what province they were from by how they were dressed. After the French Revolution, around that time period, that started to change, because before that, you only got to wear what you could make at home basically. Everybody, it was sort of a sustenance economy, everybody farmed, traded amongst themselves, and each village got together and decided we're all going to wear this, and again, this, most of what we're wearing are our fancy ones, so they were worn only once a week for church. Uh, probably see one tomorrow, we don't have one today, but there's just a plain linen covering, it's very comfortable, called a short direct, I think Sulve has one, but she's not wearing it today. And that would have been more worn in everyday life than working in the fields, because I wouldn't go out and do farming and gather my cows together wearing this. This was only for Sundays. And so everybody looked the same. But then that started to change when the, uh, the system of farming and the feudal system and more trade with Europe and better transportation and products available, that started to change. And when that started to change, the tradition of the folk costume for each village actually started to change and die out too. But it's interesting because the one that went first, and this is as early as the late 1700s already, was the men. They started dressing in European dress and outfits. But you can see old pictures in Sweden, even into the 1900s and 1920s, there were still women wearing the traditional dress. Anyways, the practicalities of it all, um, the reason I say it's surprising they're not wearing a hat, because the women's outfits always have, had a beautiful hat or bonnet, and that was to cover the hair, because way back when, that was considered the most uh, sexy, can I say sexy in your Sexy part of the women, and you had to cover that once you got married. So none of them are really wearing hats, but they're not all young virgin maidens, I assure you, but they're wearing them for practicalities, because it's hot and it's not comfortable to dance with and you don't want to have a head covering, just like I don't want to wear this. The practicality of this men's hat, I'll show you the design of it, it's doubled, and that's not just for warmth, but this is how they were designed, because again, I wore this for my Sunday best, and when I got to church, those benches, they weren't heated, I'd have a pad to sit on, keep my tush warm. So there's practical reasons for some of the designs. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about a men's hat. Klaus, if you can step forward. And to be quite honest, in his folk, folk that Badenland, oh, close to Norway. So he's got a cap, and I'm not really sure of the purpose of it, because I was doing research, and a lot of 
parts of the costumes do have purposes. I think it's just fashion, and it looks nice with the costume, the red and the green. But the, it, the skull cap style is something that would have come from the Middle Ages. So I think it's just an element of style that they kept. Klaus has another hat that also goes with this outfit. He's going to model it for you now. And here, and this is also goes with this particular outfit from Vanland, but that would have a practical purpose. Keep the sun off your face. Now, he wouldn't be working in the fields with this, but he would wear it on the way to church because everybody walked to church, right? So you'd need to cover your head. And the whole tradition of a gomlot, you've heard of a gomlot in Swedish music, this means a walking tune. Because quite often, if somebody had a violin, they'd play it, and it was like the Pied Piper, and off they'd go to church down the roads, and people would follow, and they'd have a tune to walk to. So, anyways, thank you, Klaus. I'm going to show you two bonnets now. I'm going to ask Lena and Sulve if you could come out and model next. I'm almost pulled down enough that I can do some more dancing, so I just really want to show you a couple of these bonnets because they're really beautiful. I won't make you keep it on for very long. It's wool. Yeah, so. Sulve's whole outfit and the bonnet, can you guess where it's from? Norge. Norge, northern Norway. And Lofoten. The Lofoten Islands are very, very, very far, very far north. Lena is from Finland and her folk uh, outfit is Finnish. So I'm going to have her show you a beautiful uh, hat that goes with her Finnish folk costume. Costume, but this she actually wears with a different folk costume because she also has another one and it's a Sami costume from Lapland. Now, if you look at the Sami hat, if you've seen Sami or Lapland outfits before, that style with the flaps at the side, you see that in different colors. But if you notice the Norwegian one, it's a very similar style because Nufoten Islands is way, way up in Norway and they did have Lap people, Sami people there and they were originally nomadic. So they lived across northern Norway, Sweden and Finland, the Sami people. So that's kind of an interesting uh, thing. I'm gonna have Lena quickly show that beautiful veil hat. This goes with her Finnish outfit. No, it goes with a different Finnish outfit that she has. This, the hat itself is from an outfit that comes from Karelia. Karelia lies on the border of Finland and Russia. And Karelian Finnish music and costumes have a unique style with more Eastern influence. You've got to tie it and everything to show us. It's okay. So this, again, would be only for a married woman to wear. And it does a really good job of covering up all that sexy hair, right? So there we go. Turn around. Beautiful. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you very much. I'm going to show you one last hat, and then we're going to dance. So. I'm going to ask you to guess where it's from. Yell it out if you don't. Uh, no, it's not Swedish. It is Scandinavian. It's not Norwegian. It's not Danish. It's not Finnish. It's not from Iceland. It's it's Scandinavian. Faroe Islands. Faroe Islands. So it's a Faroese hat. Faroe Islands today is still. I guess it's sort of technically part of Denmark. They're, they run independently, but they're a Danish protectorate. It's sort of about halfway to, to Iceland from England. A little group of islands. I visited there a few years ago. It's really beautiful. This is a hat that the man would wear on his wedding, for the wedding only. And it's uh, the women that were making these, I bought this from, she was very concerned because I wasn't a Faroe Islander that I wanted to buy this hat. And I said, well, you know, I. I'm into Swedish and Scandinavian costumes and history, and I'd really like it for my collection. And she made me promise her I wouldn't wear it. So don't tell her I'm wearing it right now. Because she said, you must only wear it for the wedding. That's what it's for. So it's a man's wedding hat from Faroe Island. So that's a little bit different. I thought I'd share that with you. And I think 
I'm cool down enough. Are we ready to dance some more? Okay. Sorry, I forgot her beautiful bonnet. Yeah. Yeah. So again, covers the top of the head, not all the hair. They became more decorative and smaller. And this is also finished, this bonnet. Uh, Danish cost women's costumes have gorgeous bonnets. They're really uh, amazing variety of very intricate and very difficult to make bonnets. Okay.